Sister Brother, he's not coming down on your level to change his word. Not going to happen. So now, if he's saying to you and I that we are to bless our pastor, then we have to do that. Watch that. The Bible teaches us, it says, now something happens when you bless the man of God. He says, Proverbs 6, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrows with it. Now, most of the time when we talk about the blessing of the Lord, we talk about things. How do you know God ain't talking about things? He's talking about an endowment, an enablement. He's talking about God's supernatural ability on your life personally. So watch now. Three key words in that passage of scripture. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. The, it, and he. These are what we call personal pronouns, which means God is not talking about something else. He's speaking about him on his own self. So God is the blessing himself. So notice this now. When I'm willing to give to my man of God, now all of a sudden I put on all God is. I put on all that God is. How many know 50 Cent is Snoop Dogg? shows up with God. So when I put on God, I put on all that heaven is. Everything that heaven is, I put on. I put on healing. I put on deliverance. I put on the forgiveness of sins. I put on all the promises of God because of my willingness to sow into the man of God's life. Come on, let's continue on. We've got to show you a little bit more, then we'll get out of here. In these last days, the church is, 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 is being prepared for a, new, for a different move of God. We saw it in the book of Exodus. The Bible says there's no new thing under the sun. It is not by accident that this world has entered into an economic crisis. It's not by accident. How many know God knew this was going to happen before we knew it was going to happen? Watch God. Before God can give you new, he got to get rid of the old. The Bible said nobody takes wine and put it into an old wine skin. That's the bottle break. So what's what God has to do? In order to give you something new, he has to help you get rid of the old. Amen. Many people were not trusting God before this crisis came. You see people losing their jobs, they're losing their homes, they're going to foreclosure, people are killing themselves left and right because there's no money. People are even having more diseases in their body now because we're in an economic famine. The Bible said, me as heart failed them because of fear. You want to know why people have heart attack? It's because of fear. The Bible says it's because of fear. Now, so in order for God to get new to you, he has to help you get rid of the old. Some of you got stuff in your closet that's been in there for years. You know the stuff's outdated, you ain't aware no more. Why don't you get rid of it? When I'm getting rid of it, I'm giving God the opportunity to give me more. So we hold on to stuff, we ain't got no business holding on to it. But watch this now. There is a wealth transfer that's coming to the body of Christ. It's coming to the body of Christ. How many know you are exempt from the darkness that is in this world? For losing their job, you don't have to. The Bible said why there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. There was light in the children of Israel. No matter what was going on around them, God had them protected. So notice this now. A wealth transfer is about to take place. But it starts with a prophetic voice. A prophetic voice urges in the transfer. The Bible said that when Elisha was now prophet, the scripture said that the, 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 the Syrians had surrounded Samaria. Nobody was coming in or going out. The famine had become so grievous to the point that people were eating donkey's heads. They were killing each other's kids and eating it because that's how severe the family was. They even got to the point where they, two women were almost to fight each other because this woman said, I killed my kid and we ate it. But she won't do it. The king said, what I got to do with that? That's how severe the family was. But all of a sudden, there was a prophetic word that came. And the prophetic word came from Elisha and said, by this time tomorrow, everything going to be dirt, dirt cheap. 
by this time tomorrow, everything going to be dirt, dirt cheap. And then what we saw was four lepers. Walking into the Syrian camp and finding out that there was everything there for them. How many know today you could be broke, tomorrow you could be rich? Amen. You could go to bed broke now, wake up tomorrow, $300 million. But notice this, it starts with a prophetic voice. If there is no prophetic voice, you can never get this. So if the pastor is standing and he's prophesying the word of God, if you don't accept it, you can't have what he said. You can't have what he said. Pastor, come here. I want to show you this illustration. Go ahead and get out of here. Come here. Come here, my brother. Stand right here. I want y'all to see this. Stand right here, brother. You stand in front of him. Just stand, just stand right there. Right there. Just go right in front of this. And you stand right there. Now, let me show you who these people are in the Word of God. This is the preacher who's preaching the gospel. This is Jesus Christ. Now, y'all don't think I'm saying Jesus now. <laughs> now, Bishop... this now. When you hear the preacher preaching, you're hearing him preach. Watch what the Bible said. He that receives the prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. He that receives the righteous man in the name of a righteous man receives a righteous man's reward. He that received you received him, received me, and he that received me received him that sent me. Notice this now. So you're hearing the man of God preach the gospel every Sunday, but literally it's not him. It's him who authorized him to do so, which is Jesus. So the word that's coming forth is not really coming from him, but it's really coming from him, which is God. So notice this now. If you can't receive what he said, you can't receive the authorization that came from him, nor the prophetic word that came from God. So people are in church every single Sunday missing a word that come from you. That come from God. They're missing the word. The preacher stands and he declares there's healing in the building. So folks, leave out my sugar diabetes. He just said there is healing in the building. We forget about he authorized it. We forget about the authorization came from him. So here it is. There's healing in the building. Well, you know, Pastor, the doctor said. He just said through him what was necessary. So here's what we do. We don't accept what he said because we don't accept what he said. We don't receive his authorization and then we don't receive his authority. We miss it totally because we don't want to hear what God said. How many know doing it God's way is always the right way? It's always the right way. Give them a big hand clap. Doing what God said is always the right way. So notice this now. A, prop, a prophet's reward, they used to teach me a long time ago, basically they said a prophet's reward is whatever you need at that time. I said, well, praise God. Then I found out a prophet's reward can be twofold. It can be whatever he said. It can also be whatever you need. So when the man of God stands and he declares the word of God, it is what he said. So if we don't receive what he said, we can never have what God said. Church members miss it when the ministry is in need of finances. They miss it big time. Because in their mindset, well, I got my bill to pay too. <coughs> but you're missing the point. The point is, is that God is trying to make you exempt from things. Here Peter's out, here Peter is out, and, and, and the world gets a hold of Peter. They say, look, does your master pay taxes? Peter said, yeah, he do. He walks in the door, and Jesus said, Peter, of who do men take their tribute from? Do, do the kings take their tribute from their own sons or from the world? He said, from the world. Then Jesus said, did all the children free? He said, yeah, notwithstanding. Go ahead on. Go down to, there, to the lake. Catch a hook. The first fish that you pull up. Pay my taxes and yours too. He was trying to point out to Peter that we are exempt from certain things. We are